DSLR, mirrorless, DSLR, mirrorless. Hey guys, Omar here, and I thought that today we would show you what it's like to shoot with a DSLR versus the experience of shooting with a mirrorless. Now there are technical differences between these two cameras, but they're both cameras. They both take great pictures, but the experience of taking pictures can differ with both. Now stay tuned to the end because I will show you how you can actually shoot a DSLR kind of like a mirrorless and how you can shoot a mirrorless kind of like a DSLR. But we should start off by saying that it doesn't really matter which one you have if your quest is to find out which takes better pictures. That's more dependent on lighting and composition and how good a photographer you are. But just know that both can take incredible portraits, portraits, Okay, a quick crash course for all you rookies out there. This is a camera uh, for you youngins out there. This has a camera. This is a camera. <laughs> and for you oldies out there, uh, this doesn't have film. I can't seem to, I... This takes what's called memory cards. Now both cameras are digital cameras that have an image sensor and both cameras have a meter and the meter is important because it tells your camera what's the proper exposure. How do you get a picture that is properly exposed so that you can see it? So it's not too bright or it's not too dark. So both kind of act the same way. They're looking at a scene, they're assessing the scene, and if you have both of them in full auto mode, they'll pretty much take the same photo. On the DSLR, when you look through the viewfinder, you're looking through what's called an OVF an optical viewfinder. And most of you have seen this before. The old cameras had it. It's like a little window. And then when you take your picture, the mirror pops up on this camera. This one has a mirror. That's why it's called mirrorful. Uh, the mirror will pop up, expose the shutter and the sensor. And then when, when you're looking through the, the optical viewfinder, the image will black out, clack, clack. And then after you've taken your photograph, what you do is you check the back of the camera because you get a little preview of what the camera captured. And this is the experience with a DSLR, looking through a little window, taking a picture, and then checking if it's properly exposed. Now with the mirrorless camera, when you put your eye, oh, and that brings me to the next point. One of the things that some people can't get used to is that when you look through the EVF, which is the electronic viewfinder, it's like looking through a tiny little television. And the cool thing about a mirrorless camera is if you're in full auto, the camera will, you put your eye up to your, you put your eye up to the electronic viewfinder, or you look at the back of the screen, you take your picture, and if you were to play it back, it would look pretty much what you just saw. Okay, so that's the experience if you're shooting in full auto. Okay, the cameras are in full automatic. But what about if you're doing photography and you're actually changing the settings? Well, in a DSLR, I like to think of it this way. You are living and dying by the meter and checking your photo. With the DSLR, when you put the camera up to the optical viewfinder, the little window, there's a little meter in there and the light meter will tell you if you're overexposed or underexposed. But you don't see a preview, obviously, of your image. You just see the window to the world, which is why in, when you shoot with a DSLR, you kind of pick your meter where you want it, you hit clack, take your picture, and then you check to see the exposure. Now, when you shoot with a DSLR, you kind of learn how the meter works and that the meter can be fooled because the meter is always trying to meter for what's called 18% gray, yada, yada. What it means is if I point my camera at snow or a polar bear, it doesn't want to make the polar bear white. It wants to make it 18% gray. And so if I take a picture of that polar bear, the polar bear is going to come out a little dark. And so when you shoot with a DSLR, you know this after a while. And so if you point something at something bright, sorry, if you point the camera at something bright, you put your meter up about one click up, what's called one stop up, take your picture, and then it's properly exposed. The same goes with the DSLR if you're shooting something dark, like if your dog is black, if you point the meter at your dog, it wants to make your dog gray, and so you always shoot your dog, that sounds terrible, you always photograph your dog at one stop below. 
So again, the DSLR experience is I'm living by this meter and then I'm checking to see my photo. Now, before I talk about mirrorless, I will tell you this. I've shot events, portraits, uh, family, all kinds of images, landscape, wildlife with a DSLR, and you get used to the system. I know that I've been shooting mirrorless now for three, four years in a row, and when I go back to the DSLR, it's a little weird, like it takes some time to get used to. But if you, just like any tool, if you shoot with the DSLR, the experience becomes seamless. Almost like you don't even need to, need to check your picture anymore as you get better. You check that meter, you could just take photographs. In the old days we had film, we couldn't check our exposure. So you could just live and die by the meter and forget the checking. Now, the mirrorless camera, not in auto mode, also has a meter, but I find like I don't use the meter that much because with mirrorless, you basically live or die by the preview, the image preview. The image preview shows you what your photograph, it's like looking into the future. You, you can see what your picture is going to be. Now, by the way, this is not with every case because if you're trying to photograph, let's say a waterfall that you want to shoot with a slow shutter speed, you can't preview that. This is also true if you're shooting flash because the camera can't preview a flash. So you can actually take a picture with the flash and then you have to kind of look at the back of the camera to see what the flash did, okay? So you can only preview exposure and white balance, the colors of your photograph. So for example, if you put the camera up to your eye and it's properly exposed, but everything's orange, you know, if you shot with the DSLR, that usually when you check your photo, you're like, what the heck just happened? With the mirrorless camera, you can actually see if the image is too orange. And then you could be like, before you take your photo, you could be like, oh, I gotta change my white balance to tungsten or fluorescent or daylight, whatever. But for the most part, instead of a meter, you're looking at the photograph and sort of making it bright or making it darker. Now, another major difference between the mirrorless system and the DSLR system is that DSLR's autofocus system is really much like based on a center grid. Like you have about this much area where you can focus your images. Um, where mirrorless cameras have gotten really good at using the entire screen. And so if you're doing more video or even if you're doing portrait photography, the, the mirrorless cameras have gotten really great at tracking eyes tracking faces. If you have pets, they can like track dogs now. Some of them are starting to come out where they could recognize a bicycle or a vehicle. It's crazy. So the autofocus experience is different where with a DSLR, you're pretty, come here DSLR. With a DSLR, you're living in the center area, autofocusing and then sometimes recomposing your shot. Where with a, with a mirrorless camera, a lot of times you could look, use the back of the screen and touch what you wanna focus. Um, you know, you can sort of just have it track faces, that kind of thing. Okay, and so how can, I did mention you can shoot one like the other. So let's start with the DSLR. And there was a transition there where I didn't know if I wanted a mirrorless camera because my 5D Mark III and my 5D Mark IV were taking such great pictures. But I did, I was a little jealous about the eye and face autofocus. So, you could shoot your DSLR using what's called Live View or the screen on the back. And it's a little bit of a different experience because instead of the little grid that you have to autofocus inside the optical viewfinder, there's a lot of times a different autofocus experience on the back. You can either use the touch screen to touch a person. It's sometimes a little slower, but they've gotten better. The back of the screen where you can touch and focus, so when I used to shoot portraits, I used to actually put an eye loop on my DSLR and just turn live view on and shoot it like a mirrorless camera because that's what it was doing. It was actually popping the mirror up to expose the sensor. And it was great. You could expose for your, you could see your exposure, you could see your white balance and you can shoot your DSLR like a mirrorless camera. Now with the mirrorless camera, it's not the same thing because you still are tied to a little television that you're looking through. And from a lot of comments I've read, I've read, like some people just can't get used to the EVF. So you're gonna have to go out and try it. You're gonna have to like put your, when I first saw it, when my friend bought an old Sony and was like, hey, or look in here, 
I was blown away by like, I felt like Terminator being able to see like the focus points. And so um, some people like are drawn to it right away. You may hate it and like looking through a little, uh, you know, the little window of the optical viewfinder. But if you wanted to shoot your mirrorless camera like a DSLR, and I do this when I'm using flash because I'm in a dark room, my camera is gonna show me my exposure as you're in a dark room, idiot. So what you do is on the mirrorless camera, you can turn off that image preview. And if you turn off that image preview, you go from a dark scene to <laughs> being able to see in the dark. And what's cool is when I used to shoot events with a DSLR, if the DJ and the lights would go totally out and I would look in my <laughs> optical viewfinder, I couldn't see anything. But when you look through the little television, you have night vision. <laughs> and you have to live and die by the meter now. All right, so which one should you get? I can't answer that, only you can answer that, but just a couple things keep in mind. Companies are uh, you know, investing more advertising, more latest and greatest with their mirrorless lineup because that makes money. So these are more expensive, they're new, they're the hot thing, which means the DSLRs are being sold off. So you can find some good deals on the used market on some really incredible pro DSLRs. Um, I prefer personally the experience of shooting with a mirrorless if I go back to DSLR, I kind of miss, you know, previewing my exposure. So that's something to think about. I'd say go out and try them. That's the only way you're really gonna know which one you really like. Um, and that, that's pretty much it. Okay, awkward ending, okay. <laughs>